So while he's pulling that up real quick, uh, my name is Peyton Rushing. I cover Tennessee and Kentucky with State Tough Fence. Um, I'm a sales rep, and we're a, we're a company out of Houston, Texas, and we're fully integrated from steel mills to melting points to anything you can think of. We start to finish, we take a car, turn it into wire. So if we're fully integrated. Um, our steel mills are down in Mexico. Everything is then shipped up to Houston, and in Houston it's turned into wire. So everything comes out of Houston, Texas. Um, it's, really, it's really cool, actually. The plant, plant's super cool. I need to put a picture of the plant in here. Um, it's really neat to watch, though. Welcome. Um, I always like to start this out with plans are nothing, planning is everything. And that was Dwight D. Eisenhower. Um, the biggest issue that we have with fencing, we... As a sales rep, we work closely with our dealers, and one of the biggest things we do is we go out and we, we talk to these guys, and they're like, hey, I got a guy with a pretty big project. Can you come out here and let's talk about it? Yeah, absolutely. So we go out there and talk about it, and one of the, the biggest complaints I hear every single day, I wish I had done that differently. I wish I had done that differently. I wish I had done that differently. So my, my, my biggest emphasis, if you take nothing else away from my entire presentation, plan, plan, plan. Plan where you're going to put your water. Plan where you're going to put your feedlots. Plan where you're going to put your, put everything. Plan where you're going to put your gates. Every, every single thing about it. Plan, plan, plan. To begin planning, though, we have to know why do we need a fence. Are we going to replace an old fence? Is this new ground to be fenced? Um, J Jeremy with Gallagher, they have a really cool little thing. It's a, called an offset. It's a 12-inch, uh, looks like a little V like this comes off 12 inches off the fence. It's really neat because whenever, if you, if you do go up to an old farm, and he talks about this a lot, but you can put that offset on the fence to give your fence some more life if you can't replace it. But if we do have to replace it, let's figure out what kind of animal we need. So is this gonna be for containment or exclusion? You know, what are we trying to keep in? What are we trying to keep out? We have several different types of wire, and I'll show you real fast. We have, it's not gonna work on there. We have cattle wire. We have horse wire, we have sheep and goat, and all of ours is labeled just like this. So when you go to the store and you look at it, it's got the animal on it. Now, cattle wire and sheep and goat wire, there's, that doesn't just mean, if it says cattle wire, that does not mean it's only for cattle. There are different options. Um, most of our cattle wire is called a 949. So this is what a 949 is. It's a nine horizontal lines. It's got 49 inches tall, six inch box. They can be a six, a three, 12, the tighter the spacing, the stouter the fence. So this is a six inch box, That's where, this is exactly what we're putting up today, and a 330 foot row. But if you go to the store, and say you're gonna go into a working area or corral system, you're gonna want, it, you're gonna want a stouter fence. So a 949.6, that's a good option. But if you want it a little stronger to make sure those cows aren't gonna get out or they're gonna push up against it and not break it, you might wanna go to a 1348. A 1348, that's the most versatile fence we have. That's for sheep and goat, cattle, there's tons of options. And, and one thing we do, and, and I, I try to do really well, is educate my dealers so that they can educate you. That's my biggest thing. I want them to know what our fence does, what type of animal you're keeping in, what type of animal you're keeping out. All of our fence is also graduated. Um, so that means at the bottom, I wish I had a picture of it, but at the bottom, it's tighter. So It'll start out a, a three, maybe three on both of these lines, then it goes up to a four, and then at the top it gets bigger and bigger. That's for predator control, especially on a 1348. Um, we actually have a solar fence, and the deer, or it's a solar fence, but they flip it upside down because they want wildlife to be able to run through. So they actually put the top, the heavier at the top than the bottom, that way wildlife can run through it for those solar fences. So we'll back up. So before we begin, we want to lay out our entire area that we wish to fence on paper. We want to make sure we include our gates, our braces, you know, how much spacing on our line posts. You might not know, if you don't know this, hinge joint, which is what you would typically buy at Tractor Supply, Rural King, places like that, you have to put your post spacing somewhere between eight and 10 foot. That's, it's not gonna work. You can, you can do it further than that, but it's, it's not, you're not gonna hold your animal in. Um, and if you do, it's just gonna, you know, it's just gonna sag and it's gonna look bad. Fixed knot though, you can go up to 20 to 25 feet. Now, we did 20 today at the farm, you can go up to 25. Uh, that also depends on what type of environment you have. If you live in Minnesota, you don't wanna go 20 feet. You don't wanna go 25 feet. Ice and snow, well, it'll wear that fence out. You wanna go tighter. Um, up in Ohio, you wanna go tighter. You're in the mountains, you probably wanna go tighter. You're going up and down valleys all day. 
Um, let's consider our water lines, where our feeding areas are going to be, our catch pins and lanes. Um, if we're going to be, we can run a 949-12, that's probably the most economical cattle fence we have on the perimeter. But if we're going to come into a feeding area, we probably want to go stouter. So we might come down to a 949-6. So you can transition between all of that, especially if it's a 949. Now, if you go from a 949 to a 1348, you've got to tie off and restart. But just going from a 949-12 to a 949-6, you could technically crimp that together and keep going. So are we going to want fixed knot? Are we going to want electric? Are we going to want barbed wire? Um, a fixed knot fence with an offset electric, that's a really good fence. That, that's going to... Liability is the biggest thing with fence. You know, if your cow gets out in the middle of the night and a car hits it, how big is that lawsuit? It's huge. So liability is one of the biggest things with fence. And we need to make sure that we're protecting it. So adding an offset to your woven wire fence just is extra protection and that assures that that animal hopefully will not get out. Think about your current and future animals. Are you going to be using cattle? Is it going to be sheep and goat? Is this going to be for horses? If you're going to run sheep and goat and cattle in the same pen, you do not want to put a 949 up. Sheep and goat are stupid. They're going to run their head through it. And they're not going to get it back out. So you're going to want to run a 1348, a little tighter at the bottom. And it needs to be a 12-inch spacing. That way, if they do get their head in, they can get it back out. But if you're going to run just sheep and goat, you want to run a 4x4. Four four. And I'll explain all this when we get out to the field today. But a 4x4 four four is tight. They can't really get their head in it. That way, nobody, nothing happens. But you definitely, if you're running sheep and go, you always want to have an offset. That's a non-negotiable. That way, they'll stay off of it. Because unless you're just going to drive around your entire farm every day and check your fence to make sure their heads aren't in it. Are you going to need predator control? We have a predator apron that can go up under the fence, kind of sets on the bottom. Just makes that a little bit tighter. Try to keep some coyotes out. Make sure you start with a clean fence line. Now, a lot of guys nowadays, contractors, they, skid steers are so versatile. You can have your driver attachment on your skid steer. You can have your mulcher on your skid steer. And all of that works hand in hand. And most of these guys that run fencing equipment have the mulcher as well. So if you're going to blow through the woods like this, and you're talking an extra $100 for them to come clean it out. It's not that much. And you're, it'll save you so much time instead of having to try to fight all the weeds and, and mess with it all. Have an updated survey. Um, Clint talks about putting our fence on our property line because if we don't, what can happen? We can technically, if we don't take care behind our fence, we can end up getting our property taken away from us. Um, and Clint will go into that. It's, it's really crazy stuff. I'd never heard it until I started coming to Clint's talks. Use survey flags and marking paint to lay out our fence. So we want to make sure that if we're on 20-foot centers, we want to go out there, we want to build our 10-foot braces. You might, have, you might be looking at me like, wow, 10-foot brace, that's crazy. We want to build our 10-foot braces, though, because that's the stoutest brace you can make. Um, then we want to go out and we want to lay out our marking paint, and we want to put it on 20-foot centers, 18-foot centers, 25-foot centers, whatever's best for your environment. If you go further south, you can get away with a little more. What type of fence are you going to need? So, like I said before, tighter the weave, better the fence. The more horizontal lines, the better the fence. For perimeter fence, you can use spacious weaving, so you can use 12s. Like I said, you go tighter if not. We went over that, went over that. Use high tensile wire if possible. Now the difference between high tensile and low tensile, Morgan just talked about it, stretch. 1% of high tensile. That means if you put it up, you can tighten it as tight as you want. You come back in a week, it's still tight. If you put up the good old number nine gauge wire that your papa used, when you come back in a week, it's not tight anymore, right? It's not. And if you put up hinge joint, that's why, if you drive, leave here on the way to the farm and just look at fences, if they're sagging, that was low carbon wire. As soon as you tighten it up, it's, it elongates. It's just like a nylon rope. When you stretch it, it's done. There's no more. It's going to keep going. It doesn't have memory. This is called a memory crimp, this right here. And what a memory crimp does is it allows it to remember where it was. So you could actually put high tensile fixed knot fence up, stretch it as tight as you want, and we're going to get it tight today, as tight as you want, take it back off, move it somewhere else, and it'll go right back up and look as good as it did whenever it was over here. Fewer installation costs, that's because we have fewer posts. Whereas low carbon wire, like I said, we've got to run 8 to 10 foot on centers. We can get away with 20 to 25 foot centers on this. We have a class three galvanization or better. Now, the classes look like this. Commercial class is good, class one is better, class three is superior, and extreme is the best. Now, class three is just a, is a .80 galvanization. When you go to extreme, you're a 
0.80 plus zinc aluminum. So it make, makes it stouter. Five year fence, five to 10 year fence, 20 to 30 year fence, 30 beyond. So the more you go up, and we're talking about a, from here to here, we're maybe talking about a $20 difference. And from here to here, we're talking about another 20. So it's, it's not that bad. And you get a, So stay tough fixed knot is uh, the class three, and then you can also get it in extreme. So there's two different types. And you'll see other brands have it labeled differently, but this is how we label ours. Class three, and then we call our best extreme. Greater breaking strength, high tensile wire, breaks at 1,460 pounds. Low carbon wire breaks at 1,100 pounds. Sometimes it breaks at 500, depending on what type it is. It acts as a vertical trampoline. When we're done with this fence today, I'm going to run into it, and it's going to kick me back off. That's what we want. These animals, the whole point of fixed knot, this is its own knot. So hinge joint, when you put hinge joint on, hinge joint comes up, and it wraps around that post. So this whole, or this whole vertical line is connected all together, and then it comes off, and it goes back to the next one. Fixed knot, horizontal line is one line. Vertical line is one line. The fixed knot is its own individual piece of wire. So it's not connected to the fence except to wrap it. So therefore, it's harder to move it. It takes 200 pounds of pressure to move one knot. Just one. So it's a lot. It's a lot. High tensile versus low carbon. High tensile, like I said, has a breaking strength of 1,480 pounds. We have a, the reason for that is because of carbon content. This has a 0.64% carbon content, whereas low carbon has a 28%. Low carbon wire breaks at 560 pounds on 12 and a half gauge, 1100 on 9 gauge. So that number 9 gauge wire breaks at around 1100. If you went to 12 and a half gauge low carbon, you're going to break it about 560. Deciding on post materials. Now this is extremely important. During COVID, there was a lot of people were, the demand was insane for fencing. It was, it was ridiculous. Um, these fence companies, these post companies, they weren't drying their stuff out correctly. They were just shipping it. They were treating it and shipping it. And there's going to be a lot of people mad in a couple of years when they get their post because they're going to rot because they weren't treated correctly. When you're getting a post, you want to make sure that you, I, I put 0.50. It's supposed to be 0.40. Um, I accidentally typed that wrong. 0.40 is a CCA, and that is an agriculture coating. And we want to make sure that that's what we use. Um, if we, if we don't use that, we're looking at rotting quicker. The weakest, the weakest point of this fence is the cheapest component on it. So if you put up a 20 or 30 year fence and you put up a five year fence post, what do you get? It's, it's useless. So we want to make sure we use a .40 CCA agriculture. That way we get a 20, 30 year post with our 20 to 30 year fence. Pressure treating process, um, I don't know a ton about this. I can tell you what, what I've kind of heard from all the, all the post guys, but the way it works is they put it into a, basically a vat, and it treats it all the way down to the hardwood. Um, when it goes down to the hardwood, then it has to dry out. Now, during COVID, they were treating it, throwing it out there, sending it on a truck and booking it. It wasn't, it wasn't able to dry out, and that was the problem. Selecting the best post for the job. Chris, what size of the line post we got today? Three to four? So they're, they're, they're little, so, and, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But each time you go from three to four, four to five, five to sixes, you, you increase the longevity of your fence. You're increasing five to ten years every time you go up a size. It, it blows your mind. Braces and corners, we want to do five to six, six to seven, seven to eights, eight-foot posts because we want to go three foot in the ground. We're going to build two braces today. Me and Jeremy are going to build one. You guys are going to build the other. Um, you're going to see why you got to be three foot in the ground. If you use concrete or if you tamp it in, you will pull it out of the ground. I did a demo in Lebanon, Tennessee. It was rocky. The guy, before we got there, he was like, we can't get it in the ground. It's not going to work. He uh, put it in concrete, two foot, two foot. We start pulling on the wire. And when you pull on this wire, you get it tight. We pulled on this wire. Both braces came flying up out of the ground. We, we broke them. So... Line posts, you can use sevens, um, you can, seven foots, you can use eight foots, but you want them tapered, and we'll go over that in a second. But landscape timbers and perfect posts are not recommended because that's what you get. That rots out fast. It's not going to last. Um, it starts bowing immediately. This is what I meant when I said elongation also. 
this is, this is sagging. It doesn't stay tight. That brace is doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, so a perfect post is what, so God there's no trick period. They have knots in them. That's what we want. And the reason we want that is because that tree, when we cut it, if it's got crooks, we can straighten that back out. When we're driving, you can straighten that stuff out. You knock it in the ground. If it's crooked, you pull it back a little bit, knock it some more, keep pulling it until it's straight. You can knock all that out. If you have a perfect post, that means someone went in and cut all the good parts out. It's probably, I think they're somewhere, they're probably roughly four to fives. They're completely straight up and down. They're perfect. Problem with that is they rot a whole, whole lot faster because they don't have any of the, they don't have any of the tree left. They're just the interior. There's, there's no tree left. So they, they rot out way quicker than you'd want. Posts that are driven nine times stronger than dug posts. That is why we drive our posts. This is the driver we're using today. It's called an ideal. Jody's going to go into that when we go out there. When we drive a post, what we're doing is we take the little end. That's why they're fortified. They're tapered. We take the little end, we put it in the ground, and we start driving. As that drives, the bigger end is obviously going into the ground. So it's creating, it's not a suction cup, but it acts like a suction cup. So as it goes in, it gets harder to pull it out each time. So that's why you go in three foot, it's not coming back out of the ground. You can't move it. Lay with the land. The biggest problem we have in East Tennessee is, is this right here. And, that, and that's one of the big things with Stay Tough Wire, and one thing that we tried to make better for everybody. That memory crimp... Ours is defined more. And the reason for that, that's a 330-foot roll of wire, but it can go a little bit longer because you take 50% of that crimp out whenever you stretch it. You pull 50% of that out, you might have another 10-foot on the total length of the fence. Ours are more defined. That way they can go longer. We did that for going over dips and valleys. Line posts, we want to place them somewhere between 10 and 20. And again, that is only dependent on if you have low carbon wire versus high tensile wire. 10 to 8 to 10, low carbon, 20 to 25 on high carbon, or high tensile. Single H brace every 1,320 foot. Has anybody else ever driven down the road and you see a brace in the middle of the field, just, just randomly in the middle of the field? Like you're, you got one on the end, you drive 300 foot, and there's a brace right in the middle of the field. You drive another 300 foot, there's a brace right in the middle of the field. You drive another 330 foot, there's a brace right in the middle of the field. And they're not even tied off. What's the point in that? Is that brace doing anything? No. No, it's not. You're wasting money. You're literally lighting dollar bills on fire and throwing them on the ground. That's what you're doing. So high tensile wire, you can use a brace every 1,320 foot. You don't have to keep putting braces out in the field. You can stop that. This is where you come in with saving your money. Every brace, what did we calculate it at? $100? Give or take. Every brace you build is roughly $100 depending on what size post you use. So every single time you build a brace and you just don't tie off, you just blow right by it, staple your wire up to it, you've just lit a $100 bill on fire and threw it on the ground. You've done nothing. This is where you save your money, post and bracing. The wire's a little more expensive than low carbon, but you make up for it on the back end. H brace is the foundation of any fence system, and it's critical to the life of the system. We're going to build one of these, like I said, um, but if you don't build this right, your fence is ruined. I mean, your fence will not last. It, uh, this is the most important part of the entire fence, and that's, we're going to stress it over and over and over today while we're building. This is the most important part. A double H brace is okay, but it adds cost, it adds cost and money. There's no point in it. Um, there was a lot of people, I guess back a couple years, we went from single H braces at 8 foot to double H braces because they thought it was longer and it would work better, to 10 foot braces. After all the research and all the all the collective community coming together, a 10-foot single H brace has been found to be the best, stoutest brace on the market. That's the best one you can build, most efficient for your money. Line posts are driven, braces are built, we're ready to put up some wire. So we stretch from the center or the end, depending on the pull. I don't have equipment with me when I do demos. All I have is stretcher bars. So we stretch to the middle. If you're a contractor, though, they're probably going to pull to the end. The only negative thing about pulling to the end is you can't control the tightness. You can pull that skid steer back as far as you want, but you can't control the tightness. With a stretcher bar, you can. There's pros and cons to both. Obviously, the skid steer is going to be a whole lot easier. It's going to take a whole lot more, less work on you. That stretcher bar is going to take a lot more work, a lot more time. 
but you can control the tightness. Splice it and go. Our crimps, if you go to Tractor Supply and get a crimp, has anybody ever crimped before? Anybody? You crimped. So if you, did you use a good one or did you get one from Tractor Supply? Okay, good one, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Okay, good, good, good. So if you, if you go to Track Supply, there's really cheap ones. And I'm not going to mention the name, but they're really, really cheap. If you look on the back, it says use three crimps per crimp. So instead of just being able to use one, you've got to use three. That price looks really good when you're looking at it in the store because you don't see that it says use three. So it looks a lot cheaper than my crimp. But if you use three, do the math, it equals out to the exact same amount of money. So, it, and you get 100 in a jar... It's not 20 bucks, 25 bucks, but those other ones are like 10, but you have to use three, so you have to buy triple the jar. It comes out to the same amount of money. Fixed knot and electric go well together. Um, that's that offset I was talking about, and I'll let Jeremy go into that when he does his presentation. So in summary, plan your system, please. That is seriously the biggest complaint I get. Take into consideration gates and everything. Every single piece of that fence take into consideration. Um, build a great brace. Install it properly with the correct tools. Another thing I want to point out, the fence like we talked about is as good as the weakest link. That includes staples. Staples are cheap if they're not galvanized. You can get a China-made staple that costs nothing. If you put a China-made staple on a high tensile fence, what's it going to do? A couple of years, it's going to rust. And if it rusts, rust is cancerous. Now, galvanization is self-healing. It'll actually attack that rust, and it'll, it'll start, to, start to try to heal itself but it can't heal itself completely because that rust is going to be more than it can handle. So once it starts rusting, it's gone. It's going to keep rusting. That fence is gone. You have to cut that part out and put a, put a splice in. Use good tools. And we'll, we're going to go over all this when we build fencing, so you don't have to remember all this right now. We'll, we'll tell it all to you again. Enjoy a low-maintenance, longer-lasting fence that is cheaper per foot than a conventional system because it's tough stuff. So tree fell on it. Set it right back up. And that is a great question. Yep. Yep. So, how did it look? Okay. So, you take WD 40, spray it on there, and you can move those knots. You can move everything. Yeah, you got you got to fix them all. Yep, 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 yep. Well, I mean, you can see right here. He, I mean, he's got on the back end right here where that tree fell on it. I mean, they're crooked. They're you, they're not going to be able to go perfectly. I mean, it is a horizontal wire. It's not ever going to go back completely straight. But the fact that it stands back up and you don't have to spend any more money on it is a. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. I like that. <laughs> Now, if you, you can go out there and get, you can sit there and really spend a lot of time on it. You can get it back to looking good, but you got to spend a lot of time on it. So it's just how much time do you want to spend? Yeah. Yep. I see a lot of people around there put them out there and just run the wire right on there. Yep. My dad always said the time. So, yeah, if you, that's right. If you're going to tie it off, that brace is worthy. But if you don't, if you just blow right by it, you're lighting $100 bills on fire and leaving them laying there. Correct. Yes, correct. You can, but with high tensile, though, the difference is instead of going every 330 foot like you used to, you can go up to 1,320 foot from brace to brace. So you can go a whole lot longer. That's, that's where the money saving comes in is you can go further. Just like this. Tying off, pulling that way. We're not tying off to this one. We're blowing right by and stapling it. This, this, is, this is working, pulling back, and this post is holding all the pressure. So we're tying off here. The other side's the same way. We'll be pulling this way. We'll tie off on that side. So has anybody ever, <laughs> you ever drove down the road and you see a fence and it's X'd and it's sagging? You ever see one that's sagging? If, just pay attention when you drive home. If you X this, 
This is only good for one way. If we pull it this way, as tight, if we get this brace as tight as we can, that's working. If we go back and exit, after we've put this in, now this one stops working, and the other one starts working, and now we're going the wrong way. Only one, only one way can work. If you exit, only one way can work. So whichever way you do last, that's the one that's going to be working. There's no point in exiting it. You're wasting money. Yeah, so it's a, it's a lot like tug-of-war. Like, literally, imagine you're playing tug-of-war. When you're playing tug-of-war, you get down here, and you're holding, you're holding your rope, right? And when you pull, you're leaning back into it. That's the exact same thing this fence is doing. This is going up to here. As this fence pulls, this, is pull, this, this brace rail is holding this fence back. So this fence post is doing this right here and keeping everything together. It's just like tug-of-war, yeah. Yep, so if you're pulling this way, your brace has to go like that. If you're pulling this way, your brace has to go like this. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and it, it's a lot harder to explain just standing here talking to you. When we're actually out in the field, we're going to build it. We'll stand on it. You'll actually see it move. You'll see how it works. It, it makes a lot more sense when you're, when you're visualizing it. So the gate, great question. The gate is only good for this side. It's not good going this way. It's not good going that way. It's only good going like this. It's only good the way that brace is pulling. If you put it on this side, it's going to start sagging, and that's what everybody gets mad about. If you put it on this side, it won't. Now, I'm not saying you need to definitely probably put another post in there and keep it hanging on something. That's where everybody messes up. They don't do that. It is what it is. But that, that, that increases the longevity of your, of your gate anyway. So the gate is only good on this side. You're going to put a brace in, yes, sir. Yep. No, no, no. You just put this. Do what? So if we're pulling, yeah, so if we're pulling, you can use a center post as a common post. So if we're, if we're running this way, we get to, yeah, we get to 1,320 foot, our brace wire is going to have to run this way. We tie off, that fence is pulling to the middle like that. Now, when we start again, we can use that common post, we make another 10 foot brace, and we run it this way. So now we have, we have the brace going that way and a brace going this way, but we have two separate braces. Yeah, correct. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, that's right. So if it, I mean, if we're going up and down mountains, <laughs> you know, it might not go as far. So I would definitely, before building that brace, you know, you might want to start and tie off on one end, kind of roll your wire out and see where it's going to lay, and then take off a little bit. Always take off a little bit. Because you can, the cool thing about how wire is if you ever get to a point where you need more, you can crimp it. That crimp breaks at 1,480 pounds, that, or 4, 1,500 pounds, that wire breaks at 1,480 pounds. That crimp breaks after the wire. You crimp it, you can stretch it, and it won't break. So you don't have to worry about it. If you ever take off any, yeah, you know, you lighten back up, you do a little less than you should, a little less than 330 foot, a little less than 1,320 foot, crimp it back together on the next run and roll on. You'll never see it. Yeah. No, because if you put an X, only one of those X's, only, only one way is going to work. So if you put an X, if we... If we built it just like this and then turned around and put an X in it, only this way is working, and that counteracts against the fence. So now the fence isn't going to work right. Yeah, yeah. It, this brace will hold a gate on this side. 200 pounds of pressure. 1,800 pounds. Yep, yep. And you'll, I mean, you'll see, when we stretch the wire up today, it, it gets hard to do. I mean, it's not, a, not an easy chore.
Yeah. Anybody else? 